Hey friends, it's Julie from Plan to Create, and I just wanted to pop over here today and give a few tips for setting up your Hobonichi. First looked at some of these pages, I was just so overwhelmed. It's a lot of space, it's a lot of grids. Um, just looking at that, it's kind of overwhelming. It's like 5 a.m. to 4 a.m. and it's like, oh my goodness, I need to wake up earlier and stay up later to fill these pages. Yeah, no. So what you need to do is just find a way to make these pages work for you and that is going to obviously look differently than exactly how they work for me, but I was hoping that maybe I could just share some of the things that I found and if something resonates or gives you an idea to use in your planner. That'd be awesome. I have this page spread out. This is like week number 42 in the planner. So 42, you can tell, like it took me a while to kind of find my groove. I have a few ahead of that that I'm still happy with, but that's like 42 weeks. So think about it. Don't expect to jump in on January 1st and have this entirely figured out exactly how you want. If you can do that, then you're awesome and you should be filming your own YouTube video for sure. But the biggest tip I really want to share, and so why, that's why I'm showing you this page, is because I feel like these, this, is a good example of how I've taken this page and broken it down to sections that work for me. So the biggest section you're going to do, kind of want to define is like maybe your waking hours section. So for me, it actually goes a little bit farther than that. And technically I wake up a little bit earlier, but I'm not accountable for time until this point for myself. <laughs> so that doesn't make sense, but like I kind of have my morning routines and things I'm doing up here that I don't feel like I need to write down every day. And then this is kind of when my day starts, like I should be showering, going, writing, getting ready for my day. And this is all the way through dinner time for me, basically. And then before that, I have my workout. So I like to track my workouts. I want to know that I'm you know, I have a schedule and I want to accomplish it. And so I just, I assign a spot in my planner to do that. And I don't do that workout every day from eight to 9 AM, but I kind of know that it's going to happen in the morning. Generally one of the first things that I like get out and physically do. And so that's where I've decided to place it above that. I um, want to post on social media and I want to be active and sharing ideas and things like that. So I actually, created a spot for that in my planner. This is probably one of the first weeks where I kind of did that. So I decided to use that space. Like I'm not, I'm up between six and eight and there's a good chance that that is maybe when I go ahead and post those things, but it's also just a spot for me to go to my planner. It's not necessarily, like I said, time restricted here. This is the time restricted section. So above that, I do like to incorporate some washi. I don't always, but you know, that, that space definitely from five to 6 a.m is a very, it's a low key time frame in my life. <laughs> so I just, I don't need to have that available for, you know, definitely not for an hourly activity. I could use that as another section if I thought of something else I wanted to track. But then the very top open space, I really enjoy having that because I feel like if there's something that's going to be happening that day, you know, board of director meeting for my husband, something that's coming up that I don't really know where to write it into the day. It doesn't have specific hours. I don't know if I want to take hours to write it down. That's a really good spot for me to put it. It doesn't bother me to have it sitting up there. Like birthdays, that's a good place for me. It's an all day activity, day specific. That's the kinds of things that I'm writing up in that first section. So I'm kind of working up and then now I'll come work back down. So then it draws us down to this section. And this is my meal planning section. And I have kind of had some workarounds with this. Like for in the beginning, like I would meal plan the whole week. I'd write it all out, assign everything onto certain days. And then inevitably, you know, we'd switch. We'd have the ingredients for the meals, but we'd end up having this on Tuesday or we'd go out to dinner with friends that day. Something would get bumped and that's fine. I could draw through it, but I haven't given myself a ton of space to like cross out one thing and add another. So it got kind of congested if I needed to make changes. Like this is a really good example. Like, well, that was just a mistake in my writing. Never mind. <laughs> so all that to say, um, we use our iCal as a family. So my husband, my daughter and I are all living together right now and we share meal, like a meal calendar on there. So we can plug in the meals. We know what's coming. My husband knows what meat to set out in the morning. If we're going to have chicken, he'll set that out. But I don't write it down now until after we've eaten it or like it's a for sure go. So it's more like I do my pre-planning in iCal and then I come through and I do like to come back and see like what we've eaten on the days, but I have just learned that it can become kind of a jumbled mess. So I did try a removable sticky notes. Like, okay, so here's an example of like, it was a mess and I ended up covering it with stickers cause I was just such a crazy mess. And then lo and behold, the next week I tried some other stickers just to like, I think, no, those aren't removable, but no, I think that was just a cover up too of a mess. 
And then I think, oh, I started using my Pilot Friction Pen because I thought I could erase it, but that really like kind of messed up these pages. The paper's so thin. I don't love using my Pilot Friction on this because it, if I do have to erase, I feel like it makes a little dent in it, it makes it pretty messy. This is a really good example of a week that was kind of messy, but I started to use the removable washi strip stickers from the planner spot. You can kind of see them. They're very lightly colored, and I thought that that would kind of help, so as we moved things, I could do that. But bottom line, I just thought, you know what, quit messing with it. It's clearly bugging me. Like, we're all fine here, but then I have to throw a sticker on that one because it was different. It's fine, but it's just, like, for me, I just prefer it to just be like, you know what, I can track that in digital style and then just write the actual factual stuff here in my planner. So you'll see my current week, like I have the meals that we have eaten, and then I will jot down these after we eat them. So let's go back to this page because it's kind of my favorite. <laughs> and then, oh, is this one my favorite? No, this one's my favorite. Um, the next thing you're gonna see is just evening. So anything like after dinner and before bedtime, kind of like what did we do? Like did we run errands? Did we watch a show? And then if we you know, watch a certain show, I like to write that in just so that I can kind of go back and see. Um, that's kind of fun. And then one of my favorite things that I've done here is just around that like 9 p.m. mark, just decided, you know what, We're, I'm making these lists. Like, and they are not day specific lists, they are topic lists. And I know that this printing is probably really small, but I have my grocery list, home, errands to buy, share, work, projects, and incoming. And I feel like those cover the basis for me. Like if I can't figure out where something goes, like, oh, I, the work one I have now kind of called to do. So that makes it a really nice general list. And um, you'll see that all of these other ones are in the exact same spot though. So like, even though I haven't filled out this week, if I know that I'm expecting a package, then I could write it over here in this column and that would be totally safe, you know, three weeks ahead because I'm gonna keep these things in the exact same spot. Love that, and it really increases like the usefulness of this planner for me, so that I'm not just you know afraid to write ahead. That's kind of what I found myself in other planners or in other systems. So this is just like, yep, if I think of something you know towards the end of this week that I need to get at the grocery store next week, I know exactly where to put it. Love that. So the next little section I have been trying to just like, I have clothes that I like. I'm kind of into the capsule wardrobe, so I've kind of created like little capsules of things that I can want to wear during this season. And then I have an app called Cladwell. And if I, I plug all my clothes into the app, um, it helps create outfits from those clothes. And then I can plug in like what I wore that day. And it kind of keeps track like how much of my closet I'm wearing, what items I'm not wearing. And so I just put a little check mark here on the days that I have selected my outfit and recorded it in my app. So I didn't feel like I needed to write everything down. I can look on my app really quickly and see, you know, photos of the outfits I'm wearing and that's perfect for me. It's kind of more visual and interesting that way anyway. So I just like to have this little note and it's kind of a reminder to myself, like take the time and do that. Don't just grab super, you know, comfy clothes that I can wear over and over. It kind of forces me to grab some other things from my closet and get a little more creative. So that's what um, I've been tracking there and I only started that a few weeks ago. So that's kind of a new thing. Um, this last little section I have available for any purchases I make that day. Like, oftentimes I'll use PayPal to purchase things for myself um, from my like my personal account. And then I get the, I see it online and I have no idea what it was, you know, like when I'm looking at my bank statements. And so it really helps if I write down the items that I'm purchasing and like the amount. And then if I, when I'm reconciling my checking an account, I can actually tell like, oh, okay, that's what that was. It was PayPal, but it was actually this company. So that's kind of why I've been doing that. And then if I'm really diligent, then I come back through and I highlight those after I've like recorded them in our, you need a budget software because that's kind of what, that is what we use to track our expenses and to do our bills and stuff. So, so I'm still very digital there. I wouldn't like keep track of that in my planner per se, but this helps me keep track of it. Um, digitally so that I can understand like what the purchases actually were as I'm entering them so I can categorize them into the right right category. So um, the sidebar for me has been a total work in progress and I think I started this month just kind of, I, I definitely selected four colors in October to use and then I ended up using one of the planner spots. Fullbox stickers, I love using her calendar. There's nothing wrong with the calendar that's provided you know here. It's perfectly fine, but for some reason I just kind of like the crispness of that combined with a full box. And then as I 
evolve here. You're gonna see I'm kind of starting to come through and add the week number. So um, these aren't always in the same order, but from now on I'm kind of enjoying the four colors that I'm trying to use that month. A full box sticker, week number, the calendar highlighted with which actual week this is and where we fall in the month. And then I'm doing something new, an inbox. And so I, I have all of these things written down, but my husband and I, typically on the weekend some point, particularly when we were going through our move, we moved from Idaho to Arizona recently, uh, we were just making tons of lists of like, what do we need to get done? What do we need to get done? And I don't, I didn't really want to do it here and try to categorize everything. I mean, I did some, you can see back here, like this is a good example of like furniture that we're selling. That was crazy. But I, I'm just basically taking the Sundays in the daily pages. Let me see if I can find one that's, I don't want to share, I don't know. I haven't proof, proofed it to see if it's shareable or not. Um, but I'll show you that for example like this Sunday the 7th I just I do like an inbox and I just start to write a list of things so that it's kind of there and then those things can get filtered into this list or I can just refer back to that so it's kind of like ebb and flow I do force myself to go through the list at the end of the week and if I migrate that then I have to write it down in the next list or I have to write it on my week I can't just like let things fall off the cracks because I'm really good about doing that so it's been kind of a good walkthrough process for me and again just something about this book makes me feel like I can make those scratchy lists back in the back that's like that's okay I don't love them here but it's great for me to have a spot that I can just absolutely brain dump and not feel like I'm ruining my page. Yes, I probably need therapy for that. Like, who cares, right? But I care. So now it's just so fun because it's like I know I have a spot where I can put a full box sticker on this page and I know that it's not going to, you know, take the spot of something that I'm going to want to add later. So like, let me re-emphasize that having these sections really gives me a place to write information and it f gives me the freedom to write something down you know ahead because I know that I'm not going to be encroaching into a spot that I'll be like oh, I really need to add an appointment there so I love that I also just like to you know have this little play area <laughs> it's like the play area but it's also creating some function too it's telling me where I'm at in the month I love keeping track of the week number and then it helps me find my inbox so it looks like it looks pretty but it also does give me some information it's not just frills just for frills I am a work in progress in this about like writing things ahead funny story I shared this on Instagram but our stuff was supposed to be delivered on Wednesday so I got all excited like ooh, I'm gonna use a full box sticker I'm gonna unpack that day you know it'll be a chunk of time that we are going to be doing an activity unpacking and I don't need to write anything further throw my sticker down no sooner do I do that than my husband's like oh by the way the stuff's gonna arrive Thursday and I'm like no I have my sticker there I could use undo and I could have moved the sticker, but I just thought, it, you know what, leave it. It kind of shows the reality of life. And I'm learning that. Like, obviously, it's like it had been ideal if it was on the actual day that we did the unpacking, but it's okay. It's okay. It's a story in and of itself. So that's something else I've, I'm learning as I go through this and that this book is teaching me. I touched a little bit on the color schemes. It's not necessary, you know, but like I kind of, I'll flip through. I didn't really start that in September. Um, and here's kind of where I'm going to start my flip through like these you can see that I'm still just working through you know the process I'm kind of finding my way in here I'm really loving like the less bright colors which is a really new wrinkle for me if you guys have been following me for very long you know that I'm like I love the rainbow <laughs> and I do still love color but even like in my wardrobe and everything I'm just leaning a little bit less from color and loving the fact that um, all of these kind of play nicely together and there isn't like, how do I want to say it? Like, I can pull stickers from old planner spot kits and work them into her newer ones because they just are cohesive, and that's really liberating. I find that I'm using up more of my supplies by going more neutral in general, and so that's been really nice. I'm kind of flipping through these and trying to talk, but you can see, like, I've just absolutely gone way more neutral, and, like, stickers were not as big of a priority for me here it was a little bit more just getting information down and kind of finding my way around this um, I put these here these are like Poi and Hun little clear sticky notes and I I want to do that on the monthly page kind of like have those available to grab I just never ended up grabbing these and going I kind of wanted to see what they looked like on paper I just arrived they just arrived this week and so I put them there there's a white one up here it's really hard to tell that's 
purely decorative, but it would be kind of nice to have those kind of there on a monthly page so that I could grab them as I needed to add anything because I do find myself doing stuff like that. These are also like clear sticky notes with Coffee Monster Co. stickers, just kind of showing like work hours, like times that I've been in my office working. Or I love that I can like kind of move it ahead so I might plan for it one day, like I think this week, like I plan for it there. I just put a a cute little work sticker. I think that that's from papery planning. And so like I block off a time ahead that I could be like, oh, I need to have some office hours there. And then after the time is done, I could go back through and write like more specifically what it was I was working on. Um, I didn't do that yesterday. I just left that there and that's, that's fine too. You can leave it or move it whichever way. All right, where was I? I was on the circle stickers. So, um, these are from Create with Mandy, and I love them. They are like the prettiest sticker. They're kind of, they're transparent, but like I just love that there's some color on them. But they're just this fine line. Like those were really fun, and so I started to use them there, and then I decided like I want to use those in the month of October. So those the sticker sheets actually helped me pull the colors that I wanted to use, and that's kind of how that was born. And I'm not really trying to balance things. I mean, occasionally if I'm just going to throw a sticker on just for fun, I kind of look like where else have I had one. I probably wouldn't put it right next to that. I'm going to space it out. But basically I'm just looking for open space and seeing like where have I not put anything yet. And that's kind of what guides my selection at that point. If it's not like a day specific or an active, you know, showing an appointment kind of sticker. So yeah, I'm going to just keep flipping through these. I think you guys kind of get a feel for it. Losing a lot of transparent dots. Again, the little sticker theme. I did those colors in October and then I went even more neutral and I love this washi. This was like from her April kit so it was completely not related to her current supplies but I love how nicely it just kind of goes with the colors and that's what I'm talking about being able to mix and match. I'm using a lot of Tombow markers. I love crossing things off after they're done. It really shows me what I need to go back in and pay attention to. I don't do that consistently like for activities like it, you know, sometimes I cross things off, sometimes I don't. I just like to splash a little bit of color throughout there. So that's still October. I'm still kind of using those colors. I really wanted to incorporate that purpley color. I thought it was pretty and just kind of a twist on the usuals. And then this month I've gone way neutral. So these are like the brown sugar collection from Sweet Crest Designs. And those are all the four colors that are in her little collection. And so I've just gone with those this month. And they matched perfectly nicely with the November kit from the planner spot. So I love that that was kind of a, a good pairing and I've just been pulling from those this month and it number one helps me burn through stickers like I've never really gone through a sheet so well. Oh I had it here somewhere. Sorry I guess I don't. But like these little checks I'm like burning through these. I'm using those babies and it feels good. Like normally I'd be like oh, I should stop but now I'm like you know what I can buy another sheet. It's amazing. So I just keep going and I keep um checking off the, out, the workouts that I get done. It's just super satisfying first to come through with a marker and be like, yep, I did it. And then to get my little check mark too. It's like double satisfaction. <laughs> and yeah, I love that. I love to pair the icon stickers with other transparent stickers. So I've been kind of doing that, like taking a dew drop and then throwing an icon on top of it. I just incorporated um, this Sandcastle ink pad this last couple of weeks. And this is something I'll go into a little bit more detail if you guys are interested. Stamping in the Hobonichi is tricky. I will say that. It's not just like, you can't just use anything. This paper is prone to shadowing, if not bleeding. And so you just, you do have to be careful. But probably my biggest tip and something that it seems kind of weird to do is when you get a new ink pad, no matter what brand or whatever, if it's just too dark and too, you know, it doesn't work well on your paper that you've sampled, take it onto a scratch piece of paper and just over and over and over release a bunch of ink. And someone taught me that and I kind of gasped at first, but it's like, yeah, it works. And so that helped me um, feel a lot more confident stamping. And like this, for instance, is a stamp be a voice, not an echo that's used in this ink and then I washed over it with a Tombow but nothing's coming through there you know I mean maybe vaguely but it's nothing that is abnormal for a Hobonichi or for the Tombow River paper so I always want to say Tombow River paper it's like too much Tombow, Tombow <laughs> I get them all mixed up so sorry if I said that wrong the first time but yeah so loving that and then the other thing I wanted to add is that these little um, you can see sometimes I write the notes and I just highlight them with my Tombow marker 
but then I kind of alternate back and forth because if you get too many of these lined up it's just going to make like a little a spot in your planner that makes it a little hard. I can actually feel my list used to be lower so I can feel it right here that there's like stickers that have added up over time but I must have bumped it up. Um, so I just go back and forth and I probably should do this like once and then write three times and then do this once but I haven't been religious about that every other time-ish. Yeah, kind of every other time I've been switching it back and forth. So that's something to consider as you do use stickers. Um, it's kind of weird, but you would get it if you use this Hobonichi. But I don't add Sunday, I don't add my sidebar stickers as much as I want to set up my whole month. Like, I'd love to do that right now. I don't like to add my sidebar stickers until I'm done with this week. So I can write on Sunday all I want. This, this side is super nice and, you know, no ridges because there's nothing back here. And then when I start my new week, it doesn't matter. I can make this as thick as I want because I'm no longer writing in that column. Does that make sense? So that's something that I have figured out. And yeah, you'll see I have these little notes. Um, I've been watching a lot of the Planner Spot videos lately and she has a daily page where she time blocks and I loved it. Like she takes like lunch, you know, snack, dinner, and then she really figures out what she's going to be doing between those times. And I want to try that this week here in this planner. So I have a little note to do that. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I feel like I've rambled on a little bit, but I wanted to share just some things that have worked for me. And like I said, it may look completely different for you, but if you get some of these ideas and are able to incorporate them and it makes this Hobonichi a little less intimidating to you, that would be my goal here. So thanks for joining me and let me know if you have questions. I'll cover them in the next one. All right, thanks guys.